declare the motion as amended passed. Members' motion with no legislative effect. Mr. Dominic Lee will move a motion on reforming the civil service system to enhance government effectiveness. Eleven members will move amendments to the motion. This council will proceed to a joint debate on the motion and the amendments. Later, I will first call upon Mr. Dominic Lee to speak and move the motion, and then I will call upon Mr. Kingsley Wong, Dr. Tan Yue Hang, Mr. Li Chen Kang, Dr. Dennis Lam, Dr. Stephen Wong, Dr. John Ng, Ms. Nexi Lam, Ms. Carmen Ken, Mr. Andrew Lam, Reverend Peter Kuhn, and Mr. Tong Ni Chia to speak in sequence, but they may not move the amendments at this stage. The joint debate now begins. Members who wish to speak, please press the request to speak button. I now call upon Mr. Dominic Lee to speak and move the motion. President, I move the motion as printed on the agenda be passed. Recently, about the um, civil service pay adjustment scale, many uh, uh, expressed concern about it. People don't get it. Now, um, any, uh, there is any pay adjustment of civil service. We talk about it every year. While well, this year, there is a particularly strong response. Well, I think, um, you know, for the public, um, they are not concerned just about the current uh, pay adjustment, but rather the fifth wave of outbreak shows that um, uh, further exposes the um, long-standing culture of the civil servants of doing less will make fewer mistakes and doing nothing will make no mistakes. That's why there is a strong reaction to the proposed uh, to the pay adjustment scale. Uh, for example, um, when at the peak of the outbreak, now many members of this council and others were at the front line trying to get to dis distribute um, um, resources to the public, and civil servants were working from home. Don't you think that's strange? And and then uh, many of us in the uh, districts, uh, there are there are just volunteers. At the time, we didn't know what to do. There's no way we could uh, get through to the, the Department of Health uh, hotline. At the time, for the 180,000 civil servants, apart from the disciplined services, uh, where, where were they? Now, if uh, we mobilize all 180,000 civil servants, then it can't be the case that uh, no one would answer the phone. So, of course, the public were angry. And then um, that was in January, and then at the end of February, at the time, the Shang Shui Slaughterhouse um, had a shortage of manpower because um, the staff were affected by the epidemic, so that uh, disrupted the supply of life pigs. And then the central authorities sent uh, slaughter, um, slaughter workers to Hong Kong to support us. But, but they were there for several days, and still they couldn't stop work. Why? Um, th uh, our colleague Simon Lee at that time. Uh, uh, reviewed the uh, fact that um, at the time on the 5th of um, March, uh, on the 2nd of March, um, the, um, they, their, their company sent some 38 slaughter workers to Hong Kong, but then the food and environmental hygiene department um, did not act um, quickly. So that's why the, they were left idle there. So that's the culture of civil servants. Uh, the less they do the few mistakes they make. Uh, it's not because our civil servants are of uh, poor quality. Actually, I know many civil servants of high caliber. The reason why they are uh, not acting is all because it's um, about the system. Now, with the civil service pay adjustment, we know that uh, it follows the pay trend survey indicators, uh, the pay trend indicators. Well, of course, other factors will be considered, but then these factors have nothing to do with their performance. As a promotion, to a large extent, is by seniority. And also, unless civil servants have committed serious mistakes, they would not be dismissed. So with a system like that, of course, some civil servants will have the mentality of uh, uh, doing less, then they'll make less mistakes. So we need to change the situation. That's why we need to reform the current civil service system. We need to uh, formulate KPIs that is um, for a promotion and a pay increase, they have to be linked to perf uh, KPIs. It is no longer by seniority. If someone performs well, um, the person could be promoted quickly. We also need to streamline the civil service uh, mechanism. So for civil servants who don't meet the KPIs over a prolonged period, they could be dismissed without warning. And that way I'm sure civil servants will be a lot more uh, proactive.
Uh, apart from this uh, culture of uh, doing less, the better. And but then um, in 2019, of course, um, the civil servants' uh, political stance was criticized. At that time, many civil servants came out to uh, oppose the government openly. In their office, they would uh, set up a Lenin wall at Facebook. Or they would oppose messages to discredit the police. They even held assemblies to oppose the government openly and, um, and um, discredit the police. And then on the 21st of July, uh, there were over 100 AOs who uh, wrote an open letter to the chief executive asking for an independent commission uh, inquiry. So they uh, were pitching themselves openly against the government. Now, in the AO's um, uh, grade, there were just about 700 officers. And we're talking about 100 officers turning the, against the government, so it's a high percentage. And AOs are the uh, elites of in the government, and they that's how they uh, conducted themselves. And you can imagine for other civil servants, though you you could look at the civil servant secrets page; uh, it's still working. So it's for such, shouldn't we question the loyalty of such uh, civil servants? Of course, starting from last year, civil servants had to. Um, to make an oath, but then in the whole civil service system, only 100 civil servants uh, quit because they refused to sign the declaration and make the oath. Do you believe that's true? Can you imagine out of the 180,000 civil servants, only uh, less than 100 were not loyal and the rest are loyal to the government? Well, if that's the case, then last year when the government asked civil servants to use the leave from safe app to enter government prices on the very first morning, there were a few civil servants who were arrested by the police because they used a fake Leave Home Safe app. So it's hard for us to imagine how many civilians have actually taken the oath but that they're still not loyal They are just uh, still staying in the government to uh, do something in um, defiance of the government. So even if civil servants don't follow, uh, are in defiance, there's no power to uh, dismiss them. Now, uh, under the co civil service code, uh, civil service regulations, uh, for m uh, f uh, apart from the permanent secretaries and uh, drivers, um, the, p the performance of civil servants are decided upon by their uh, supervising officers. And then the secretary for civil service or the secretary for justice are not involved in the promotion and disciplinary matters of civil servants. So if um, there are civil servants secretly in divines of the government, how do we stamp that out? That's why we need to make reforms. We have to allow uh, um, politically appointed officials to be involved in the appointment, uh, promotion and dismissal of civil servants. Only then could we make sure that the culture or uh, the philosophy of the ruling team is fully reflected in the management of civil servants. Now, with the national security with, uh, uh, law in place and with the elect improvement to the electoral systems and with the new chief, chief executive, many people in Hong Kong want things to go back to normal. Now, w there were pre uh, issues that we could not uh, address, like um, a wealth gap, housing problems, and so on. Hope, we hope they will finally be resolved. But if we just have good laws and uh, good chief executive, that's not enough. We need a civil service that is um, responsible, that uh, they will give up on the mentality of uh, doing less the better, and then, and, and then they will not be secretly in defiance of the government. So we need to reform the civil service system. It's a matter of urgency. I believe many in the civil, uh, among civil servants are uh, competent and they are prepared to do more for Hong Kong. So we just need to make changes to the system. And then civil servants certainly will make work more effectively and governance will be enhanced and definitely will be able to address all the problems and the Hong Kong will love will scale uh, further heights. Thank you. I now propose the question to you that Mr. Dominic Lee's motion be passed. Mr. Kingsley Wong. Thank you, President. First of all, I have to thank Mr. Dominic Lee for moving this important motion. Our civil service has been lauded as clean, efficient, professional, fair, and capable. However, after the 2019 black cloud, black cloud violence, it showed deep-rooted problems in the civil service. We need to be result and um, effect-oriented 
to reform the civil service system and strengthen the administrative capabilities of the civil service to address the pressing issues of housing, wealth gap, and uh, medical services, so that everyone can live happily and the society can be harm harmonious. Now, after the to improve the uh, to um, uh, improve the um, administration system, we have to address the. Uh, the civil service um, requirements so that, uh, and and apply highest uh, political standards for the AO. During the black cloud violence, um, some um, elements alluded with um, foreign uh, elements and uh, conducted an onslaught on the LegCo and attempted to uh, carry out a color revolution to challenge the administration. At the time, uh, civil servants um, did not take any action and allow the situation to spiral. And also, Western countries are led by the U.S. is trying to stem the uh, peaceful uh, rise of China. Recently, 110 um, parliamentarians of the U.K. request the government to review the assets of Chinese officials' assets in the U.K. If a directorate officer has due nationality in formulation of policy, who should, uh, to which country should the uh, official uh, pledge allegiance to, his country or um, the other nation? So the nationality issue is not just a political issue, but a real pressing problem, and also. The civil servants are civil servants of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region of the People's Republic of China. They are the civil servants of Hong Kong as well as of the nation. To perform the duties, they have to be trained in terms of national uh, affairs. National study programs should be offered to civil servants by the Civil Service Bureau as well as a um, private um, organization. Enrollments in these courses should be made uh, reference points in terms of promotion. And also, we should arrange for civil servants to work in um, the national uh, departments and in the central governments so as to enhance their understanding towards national strategies and policies so that we can better align with the uh, nationals, um, with the nation's directions and um, tie in Hong Kong's developments with, the, with the national development. And also we have to change the civil service culture. There's always been um, um, over-reliance on seniority and uh, civil servants are often inactive and they just need to um, wait for the turns to be promoted. There was an old saying that even uh, if a civil servant is underperforming, the supervisor would um, write some nice things in his reports and uh, transfer the civil servant. So under the new era, we have to be result oriented to allow those civil servants who are who have a will and the ability to do things to be promoted. In all fairness, most of the civil servants are willing to serve the community. Because of all the bureaucracy, the hands are tied. I suggest the government review the civil service um, regulation to remove the red tapes for those who are willing to act. And also, we should legislate against um, insulting public offices so that um, civil servants um, can be given the respects that they are due. Mr. Tan Yuehang, thank you, President. I thank Mr. Dominic Lee for moving this motion so that we can focus on the prom promotion, dismissal of um, civil servants, as well as enhancing the administrative effectiveness of the government. Now, this is a new era of development for Hong Kong. We have a higher standards and expectations for the civil service. We have to keep the mindset of the civil service in pace with the time. However, 
um, civil servants are often would often eschew uh, from additional responsibilities and um, have the mindset of doing less uh, to make fewer mistakes. It uh, really undermines the innovation, innovativeness of the civil service. We have to um, adopt a meritocracy system and enhance the overall activeness and effectiveness of the civil servants. I have uh, three suggestions. First, we have to enhance the existing promotion system for civil servants. The Secretary for, Sec for Civil Service has said that promotion would follow the existing mechanism. Considerations include the capabilities, experience, as well as the um, knowledge required for the position. The, a promotional board would be promoted uh, would be would promote um, uh, suitable candidates to fill the position. I think we have to place more attention attention to performance, um, professionality, as well as capabilities. We should uh, directly pack promotion opportunities with performance. Only then will we have a capable and uh, modern civil service. And also. We should allow political appointees to be directly involved in the promotional decision, in making promotional de decisions, so that the suitable candidates would be promoted to suitable positions to better serve the society. Also, we should review the composition of the Public Service Commission. Now, uh, do for those earning salary points um, 26, the appointments of these um, civil servants have to be approved by the Public Service Commission. However, members of the commission are required to um, possess um, experience in the civil service. As a result, um, those who have worked in um, the judici judiciary departments and other uh, uh, branches um, are not eligible to serve on the commission. However, we require um, tight communication between different branches of the government. So I, I suggest reviewing the composition of the Public Service Commission so that non-AOs and those who haven't ser served in the civil service can be a member to participate in promotional um, decisions. Third, concerning the culture of eschewing uh, problems and responsibilities, we should set a performance assessment system for civil service. In year 2021, there was a study report, report um, compiled by the Legislative Council. It says that uh, the, Hong, the Hong Kong civil service lacks incentive. Work performance is too, work appraisal is too generous. And the time required for promotion is too long. The appraisal is too lenient. As a result, um, the suitable candidates cannot be identified uh, by the appraisal results. I suggest reviewing the various um, categories of the appraisal and the grades so that we can clearly distinguish um, civil servants who are performing well and those who are underperforming. The civil service is the major executive branch of the Hong Kong government, and they are invaluable assets to our society. It is important to promote suitable candidates and maintain a efficient, clean, and, a, and a capable civil service. It is important for Hong Kong's future. I suggest reviewing the performance appraisal system and the dismissal system for the civil service. President, I also submit I support the motion moved by Mr. Dominic Lee. Uh, Mr. Lee Jen Kern. Thank you, President. I've always advocated reforming the civil service as well as um, um, improving the efficiency of the government. We have to introduce uh, measurable KPIs so that the public can assess the performance of the government. In terms of, uh, on KPIs, many successful corporations have adopted the important um, performance indicators to achieve sustainable development of the corporation. 
KPIs are widely uh, ap applicable in the um, um, business community, and it is also important for improvements of governance. Many governments have responded to the uh, proposal of, made by the OECD to um, adopt KPI to enhance administration. Take uh, our major competitor, uh, Singapore, as example. Several years ago, the Sing Singaporean government sets up 18 KPIs. For example, uh, scoring uh, top scores uh, in terms of uh, governance in the uh, World Bank's report so as to provide um, first rank um, administrative service to the public. Uh, the country has scored 100% uh, top score in the report for uh, a few consecutive years. And also salaries of officials should be directly packed to um, the performance. It would affect um, their bonuses uh, by uh, 30 to 40%. I think one of the major issues internally is um, lack of cooperation between the uh, departments. Departments, works in, departments work in silo, and sometimes the policies are out of touch. Now, um, for example, during the um, initial period of the fifth, the fifth wave, when someone is in fact when someone was infected, um, he had to call a hotline to book a uh, a consultation in the clinic and another call um, for a designated taxi, and hence the golden period was missed, and the patient wasn't able to report his infection directly to the um, FEHD, resulting in discrepancies and inaccurate uh, reporting. As a result, the patient did not get timely um, treatment. And also um, take um, a rodent as an example. Government departments lack cooperation in dealing with rodent issues. FEHD is the leading department. However, according to the newspaper, they, it costs uh, some $10,000 to catch just one rat because uh, the FEHD is using the traditional um, rodent cage to catch rodents. There was no cooperation with the um, INT Bureau for innovative uh, rodents devices, and there is no uh, collaboration with uh, other departments. As, and in the end, a uh, rodent's problem uh, was rampant. Departments should be working closely together under a single mindset. The Liberal Party looks forward to having new um, secretaries who can really coordinate works between different departments and enhance the administrative efficiency of the government to really solve problems so that we can really achieve the results-oriented vision and the people-based um, approach uh, suggested by the uh, chief executive elect. In terms of the civil service, the major issue is that um, the job is too secured. There is no mature um, um, awarding mechanism. Many civil servants would eschew uh, from responsibilities and have the mindset of doing less, make fewer mistakes. To improve the promotional mechanism, I suggest political appointees or even independent third parties um, to be involved in making promotional decisions. We shouldn't just rely on seniority. Promotion should be linked with um, work performance, for example, um, activeness, proactiveness, as well as uh, capabilities. Especially for district offices, we have to ensure that they are accountable and um, that they are active. We should add accountability indexes to improve their sense of responsibility and their proactiveness. We are going to have a new term of the government. I believe that with a steady and efficient civil service who care for the public, plus the rule of law approach of the next term of the government, we can address the deep-rooted issue in Hong Kong and improve the administration in Hong Kong so that people can live happily. I so submit, I hope, I urge members to support the motions. Dr. Dennis Lam. Thank you, President. First of all, I would like to express my gratitude to Mr. Dominic Lake Lee for moving the motion. The civil servants team 
is an, an essential force to promote good governance of the government. Ensure, uh, ensuring the stability and solidarity of the civil service team is an important task for the SAR government. Pro the promotion system of civil servants is an important part of the civil service uh, structure, so we need to listen carefully to the views of the public so that there will be uh, fully objective uh, promotional st promotion standards. I think for the uh, promotion system, uh, the most the biggest criticism is, is that promotion is often by seniority, so we are not able to um, appoint the best person to the job. In the 2021 policy address, the chief executive stressed that uh, she has asked the secretary for civil service to go by the principle of meritocracy and review the uh, appoint, um, appointment and the promotion system for senior posts is to make sure that um, we have the best persons in these posts. We hope that after reviewing the mechanism, there will be more um, civil servants of the right caliber and uh, ethics to uh, take up the relevant posts. Now, with the pandemic and the ever-changing geopolitical situation, um, so you know, being able to perform one's job is not good enough. We need someone with vision, with uh, courage, and one who wouldn't shy away from challenges. These are the essential qualities of civil servants so they could help to address the pressing issues of the public. And then the public will see that the government is around, is there for them. And then uh, um, with the, uh, various uh, policy promotion, the government will respond to face various challenges. So there is need for innovative approach and civil servants must keep learning to broaden their um, vision. For example, uh, we have to look at how other cities address similar issues in Hong Kong. So when it comes to promoting civil servants, especially directorate officers, that we must put emphasis on um, new mindset and uh, problem-solving skills. Now, uh, when I visit the uh, civil serv uh, the service web page on promotion, there are just a few lines to give the criteria for promotion of senior uh, civil servants. So the public are not able to see how civil service is actually promoted because uh, these uh, people may feel pose uh, that um, are closely related to the likelihood of the public. So the, the more uh, able, uh, competent civil servants must be promoted. And that's why Dr. Stephen Wong um, proposes in his amendments that uh, there should be more people involved in the promotion of uh, uh, civil servants so that um, there could be practical views offered on such uh, promotions. I fully endorse that. Mr. Uh, Premier Li Keqiang, when uh, he met the uh, chief executive elect on Monday, he asked the new government to actively respond to issues of great concern to the public that government must keep improving its governance and it must spare no effort in addressing the um, pressing likely issues and tough likely issues of the public. So to, to um, make this happen, of course, we need a strong civil service team that would dedicate itself to, the, uh, to the, its work. So we hope uh, we will have a civil service system that will ensure the development of Hong Kong. So I speak in support of the original motion and the amendments. Thank you. Dr. Stephen Wong. Uh, President, I'm grateful to Mr. Dominic Lee for moving this motion. In, uh, I support the motion uh, for, the, uh, the, uh, for the government to reform the promotion dismissal systems of the civil service. Now, in the long run, the promotion system is a matter of um, human resources management. Uh, it's also about um, um, uh, the base, the foundation for improving governance and um, enhancing the efficiency and effectiveness of the civil service. Now, there was a discussion over two decades ago, and the SL government should actively cons uh, follow up on the relevant uh, recommendations uh, presented by a task force uh, to review the civil service pay policy system in 2001. I mentioned three points in particular. These are the um, conclusions of that uh, task force that is on uh, uh, 
uh, KPIs. Uh, there's need to formulate KPIs. Uh, it's something we talk about these days often, so that uh, KPIs will be linked to pay, and there must be uh, flexible elements on pay increase or deduction to ensure uh, efficiency and effectiveness. And then. Uh, departments should be given more powers to have regard to their own needs in managing um, pay matters. Uh, that's the second point. The third point is to consider streamlining the structure, and so that and there could be more easy cross uh, department deployment. But unfortunately, most of the recommendations were not taken up; only a few were followed up upon. And then if we look at neighboring cities such as Singapore or South Korea, in 2012 and 2015, Singapore and Korea continued with civil service reform, respectively. They have now a performance-linked uh, pay system. And then on the appraisal system, not everyone will uh, get a grade A. So there are certain common elements in the civil services management now for Singapore and South Korea. And such reforms have been useful in boosting civil service morale because those who are capable would not be afraid of such reforms. We want a civil service management system that will encourage people to do better and to reward those who are capable. Of course, we know there are many good quality civil servants in Hong Kong, but then we have an outdated system and, and that would affect the overall governance of the government, which is a great pity. So that's why I, in my amendments, I suggest that, uh, first of all, we could uh, enhance the composition of the Public Service uh, Commission. Let me speak briefly on that. As you know, um, um, uh, senior AOs are in charge of uh, policy matters and uh, personnel matters. And then the Public Service Commission, PSC, is, is, uh, has the power to, uh, for the appointment promotion of uh, AOs. All along, the chairperson of the PSC is a retired senior AO. And according to the uh, PSC ordinance, Legislative Council members may not be appointed as chairman or members of the PSC. And even for former um, legislators, they would not be appointed to the PSC. That's what I ch found from checking on past composition. I find that uh, baffling. I don't know why there's this arrangement. I agree there's need for us to have retired senior AOs who are familiar with the workings of the civil service system. But then must see... PSC be chaired by a retired senior AO. Now, this seems to be a convention. Must we keep it? So I ask the government to review the composition of PSC. We should consider appointing other persons from the community to chair the PSC. That would be the first step of reform. And after we enhance the composition of PSC, then we could bring about some innovative um, uh, reforms uh, to the system. And then there will be uh, objective and pragmatic views advanced on the promotion of civil service posts, and then we'll have the best civil servants to serve Hong Kong. Thank you. Dr. Johnny Ng. The civil service system is an important part of the um, gov government team. So uh, apart from political loyalty, we need to boost also their abilities. Now, um, in the past, um, civil servants have uh, been renowned for their abilities to manage matters. But then because of the uh, pay and promotion system, there is not a culture of doing less to make fewer mistakes. So that's why I agree with uh, Mr. Dominic Lee, we need to reform the, the system. Now, first, we need to talk about uh, digital literacy and digital capabilities of civil servants. Now, uh, the, there is now promotion of a digital uh, development, and the government wants to, to develop Hong Kong into a smart city. But then some civil servants are not familiar with the digital uh, capability, uh, technology, they don't have the relevant mindset, so they're not able to help her to promote Hong Kong as a smart city. That's why I'm moving rather slowly on this strand, 
and is not so, so satisfactory. And that would actually affect the uh, perf uh, perf the governance of the of Hong Kong. For example, the fifth wave of the outbreak exposed the um, failure of the government to make use of digital technology, and then that's caused the further public grievances. Now, on the leave home, from the Leave Home Safe app to the isolation procedure, there have been problems and confusions. And then even for the uh, uh, recovery uh, QR code, uh, there has been confusion. My office has received many requests for assistance. And then for the declaration of the uh, temporary vaccine pass, people had to queue up at a post office. And so there were long queues. It was supposed to be good policy, but because the way it's in implemented, it's become something that uh, uh, bothers the public. Uh, like there is this... Um, um, concert that's very popular now they have uh, they, they have adopted the real name um, online um, ticket thing system but then there's some um, um, congestion um, online in a way people couldn't get a ticket after spending 10 hours on on the, on the computer so the government needs to further promote the use of big data and promote such digital development. Now that's been, um, you know, um, you know, responsibly spread over different departments, and then uh, it's difficult to coordinate work. So that uh, stand stood in the way of the government resolving issues, and also because of privacy concern, um, departments could not share data. But um, if the government could uh, consider re in amending reference legislation. They could come to this council. I'm sure members here will be able, to, will be prepared to consider relaxing the rules uh, to better serve the public. And civil servants should make better use. The government should make better use of uh, digital uh, technology, and they could make use of uh, big data to help in policy formulation. And then. Um, we could streamline the civil service team at the same time. There could be better policy making um, capabilities of departments. In, on the mainland, actually, they are now um, widely adopting um, information technology. And the state leaders have stressed that um, different ranks of um, government servants must um, enhance their digital capabilities. They have to have a stronger sense of digital security and one of the key um, um, uh, measures is to um, train a large number of um, government servants with digital capabilities and literacy. So we need to also strengthen um, the training of digital literacy and capabilities. Uh, we need to, uh, to include um, IT uh, training as a um, matter for considering the performance of civil servants that will help to lead Hong Kong to move ahead. Thank you. Your Honourable Nexin Lam. Thank you, President. First, I want to thank uh, Mr. Dominic Lee for sponsoring this motion to urge the administration to inform the civil service system to enhance government effectiveness. This is the aspiration of many in community. Now, uh, it's easy to hear. Uh, members of the public saying that what can you expect from the civil servants? In fact, uh, our civil service has always been regarded as a very professional, clean, and effective team, uh, a world acclaimed. But there are many grievances about the civil servants. And because of the recent epidemic, um, many uh, problems uh, in the civil service have been exposed. And there must be reform in order to uh, live up to nowadays expectations. I think uh, the greatest source of complaints would uh, be compartmentalization of the civil service. And uh, during the epidemic, I'm sure we still remember how uh, people have to uh, call different hotlines to ask for support, to have medical consultation, and to make an appointment uh, with a designated clinic is so difficult to get through. And after you've got through, then you're asked uh, to call another hotline. So uh, those are confirmed patients had to call many, many hotlines and being passed from one department to another. I think we've all uh, got this exp experience. Wow, the whole citizen at war, if we still are so uh, com 
compartmentalized. I think it's all because um, civil servants would rather uh, not do anything to avoid mistakes. Uh, this is because the current promotion system is too uh, closed. Uh, there is no open competition. To change their mindset, we must change the pay adjustment mechanism. And so in my amendment, I say that we should give uh, first priority to the performance of civil servants in considering their promotion and pay adjustment and open up more directed vacancies for cross-grade promotion selection. Now, for the Public Service Commission responsible for promotion decisions of the civil service in the 2019 report, they said that the appraisal system was too lax and there was no way uh, to tell who were really best suited for the post. In between 2001 and 2004, only 25 civil servants had been uh, suspended pay increment or delayed. So uh, the figure dropped to 10 in between 2015 and 20. So in the 190,000 strong civil servants, only 0.005% of them performed so poorly that they did not deserve a pay rise. Now, uh, judging from your uh, experience uh, with so many civil, civil servants nowadays, do you think this is a real picture? So, so long as you have not made a major mistake, you continue to enjoy pay increments and pay rises. This is against the principle of performance pay management. And as a result, uh, they have developed this culture of uh, not doing anything to avoid mistakes. And I think too much store has been set by seniority in promotion. So even for a not so competent civil servant, so long as he's senior enough, in time he will be promoted. To deal with this, we must open up more uh, senior ranking civil servant posts so that there can be cross-grade promotion selection and we should um, expand the scope of eligibility from promotion selection and also uh, people from uh, similar from a different sectors in the community sh should be allowed to take part in open recruitment. You may feel that we want to uh, uh, want to um, uh, tackle the civil service. Let me say that the majority of the civil service are very uh, outstanding. Secretary, uh, the Secretary for Civil Service, and even our colleague Mrs. Regina Ip are from the Civil Service. I have uh, met many civil servants that are highly dedicated and competent, but then because of the system, they um, have not been able to do what they want to do. So we must have a system with clear rewards and punishments so that those who are dedicated and committed can be promoted to serve the community. So. We should have a certain system. So, uh, for instance, we should have a ranking for uh, the performance of civil servants in the same rank and grade. And also, we should have a good basis for giving uh, increments. And for those who are performing poorly, they should be demoted and uh, the pay rise should be suspended. With this system, civil servants uh, will be conscious of uh, making improvement themselves. Thank you. Ms. Carmen Ken. Thank you, President. After uh, the improve, improvement to our electoral system, we have three elections. Presidency meeting, the uh, chief executive elect said that Hong Kong has now moved uh, from chaos to order and we're not advancing towards prosperity. We're at a critical juncture. And he is of the view that the new term of government will bring refreshing changes to Hong Kong. We're going to open a new chapter of development in Hong Kong. Premier Lee Hak Kang also expects a new government to keep enhancing government effectiveness to have um, patriots ruling Hong Kong and to have good governance. All uh, administrators, including civil servants, uh, must have uh, the will, the drive, the competence, and ability to deliver the targeted results. And uh, Mr. Dominic Lee's motion on reforming the civil service system to enhance government effectiveness is very timely. I have uh, encountered many um, civil servants, and I think my uh, impression of the system can be summarized in the following few points. First, principal officials are supposed to work very closely with civil servants, but I think our system is lacking. I uh, mentioned uh, the current system of the Public Service Commission. Now, for the code of the civil service, its last revision was done in September 2029. Shouldn't it be reviewed so that 
In the new term of government, uh, principal officials and civil servants can work together for the benefit of our people. Now, we always take pride in a highly professional and clean and competent civil service. There are people in the civil service that know the procedures very well, their experience, but they are very sensitive to uh, their uh, terms of reference. Uh, they adopt this um, uh, um, of uh, only caring for their own business. In fact, to resolve economic and livelihood issues, they should all go an extra mile and engage in interdepartmental coordination. Thirdly, principal officials do not take part in the uh, promotion of civil servants, and the mechanism stresses seniority and it's not performance linked. There is no open competition and therefore civil servants do not have the desire to deviate from established procedures and practices. So there is no vitality, vitality in the whole system. I have uh, several suggestions to make. First, we must rationalize the relations between principal officials and the civil service. We should review the code of the civil service. In paragraph 5.5, it is said that for heads of department, they have uh, to um, be accountable to the principal officials through their permanent secretaries. Now, this code has been in place for a long time. It's time to review to whether they achieved its intended objective. Of course, um, we HR management is a test for the leadership of uh, secretaries and director of bureau, but then uh, they should also be involved in the performance management of uh, these senior civil servants. Thirdly, uh, we must um, do away with the system of focusing on procedures rather than effectiveness. Hong Kong has a rule of law. It's, of course, good that we have established procedures. The purpose is to have a fair and open society and uh, to raise effectiveness. However, we must not put the cart before the horse. We should not use established procedures as an excuse to uh, evade difficulties. Thirdly, we must focus more on um, candidate's ability in coordination and problem solving. And we should open up more senior civil service posts for open recruitment to enhance the initiative of our civil servants. Uh, the open recruitment of the head of the civil service college is a good example. All in all, we must review the civil service system, the important component of the government. So they must have this general, national, and global perspective. And then they should um, have a micro perspective of the deep seated problems in Hong Kong. Now, there are so many things waiting to be done. The civil servants must serve Hong Kong with honesty and eagerness. Now we have uh, the basic law and we have a high degree of autonomy. Can we do as suggested uh, by the director of the National Security Office in Hong Kong? Now, uh, civil servants must be committed and uh, be willing to show the responsibilities. I hope that the civil service can be reviewed in the next uh, government. With these remarks, I back to move. Thank you. Ms. Andrew Lam. I have to declare interest. My uh, wife is a civil servant. I thank Mr. Dominic Lee for his uh, motion and also amendments by members. Now, uh, we have a highly clean and professional and efficient civil service. The question is whether they can still live up to the high expectations of the community. According to the CSB, heads of department, can invoke uh, various uh, regulations to suspend increment of uh, uh, non-performing civil servants. However, on average, we've only got a few civil servants are uh, subject to this sanction, and uh, those are uh, ordered to um, uh, to retire early. Well, we've only got a dozen or so in the past decade, so we're not able to promote civil service morale, we can't say that this is a proven and established mechanism. We cannot live up to the ever-rising public expectations, and our civil servants are not facing up to challenges bravely. It all depends on uh, whether our civil servants are able to um, achieve objectives. 
Uh, this is because the rewards and punishment system are not good enough. We talk about checks and balances. As a result, civil servants have the mindset to stick to established procedures. There must be reform and changes in the civil service. So there is uh, this need to amend or to reform our civil service. I propose to amend Mr. Dominic Lee's motion. We should reinforce the performance-based criteria for handing out rewards and punishments so that we can reward competent civil servants. They can be promoted and given a pay rise, and those who are not performing well, they um, can uh, be demoted or, or even sacked. Of course, uh, there's a great demand for coordination within the civil service. If we just look at performance-based criteria, then uh, there may be contradiction between KPIs of different departments, and this will dampen the uh, initiative for cooperation. And then we will undermine good governance. So I suggest that for different ranks and grades of civil servants, they should have their respective performance-based criteria so that we can unleash the potential of the civil service. Some grades may be easier to have uh, objective performance-based criteria. Whether this can be done will depend on how we measure the success or otherwise of policies. So the government should introduce big data to analyze the short, medium, and long-term effect of policies. There should be objective criteria. So for civil servants responsible for a particular area, they the performance will be measured uh, by objective criteria instead of by public opinions or people's impression. There should be reforms in the civil service. Uh, objective performance-based criteria will help the accountability team and the civil service to move towards the same direction and implement the um, policies and directions laid down by the government so that we can open up a new chapter for Hong Kong. So long as under the framework of uh, the basic law we can reform the civil service system, I'm confident that with a uh, quality civil service, we can professionally and effectively implement policies so that we can respond to people's aspirations in a targeted and expeditious and effective manner. Thank you. Only Reverend Peter Kuhn. President, the mindset of doing less will make fewer mistakes and doing nothing will make no mistakes um, has plagued the civil service. Or oh, by the uh, complaints to the Ombudsman uh, Office, we can tell how uh, dissatisfied the public is to, towards the civil service. During the epidemic, um, coordination, uh, tracing, um, isolation and quarantine, as well as testing, it seems that the civil service is always a step behind and the public is uh, disgruntled. Minor issues like application for services and major issues uh, like application to change uh, land use uh, are too slow. The government stresses uh, too much on procedural justice. As a result, uh, civil, ser civil servants follow the uh, procedures blindly and um, neglect the importance of results. A lot of needy persons, when applying for um, so uh, social uh, services, need to go through multiple um, hurdles like application, vetting, and interviews. On the surface, it is procedural justice. In fact, the applicants have to suffer unduly long wait. It is also against natural justice. In terms of um, promotion, there is a lack of, um, of um, um, correlation between award and punishment and promotion. As, as a result, many civil servants as chew from responsibilities, and because um, um, they are scared of um, judicial review, they would uh, choose to um, turn away from challenges. In dealing with complaints, the government would focus on whether these, the civil servant in question has violated procedures rather than if uh, he had delivered. 
members mentioned two possible solutions. One is to draw reference to our neighbors. I will not repeat um, those points. I believe that if we can enhance the um, sense of uh, responsibility among political appointees, uh, it will help to enhance the civil service. If we hold the political appointees uh, accountable and uh, give them more power, it may be uh, more efficient. We are going to have a new team of uh, management in the government. In order to achieve good governance, we have to have the cooperation of the civil service. Undoubtedly, most of the civil servants are the elites in society. And they are also the one to implement uh, policies and serve the public. Hong Kong's success um, is closely related to the contribution made by civil servants. I hope that the civil service can keep abreast with time and respond to the public's expectation. That's why I think reforming and rationalizing is warranted. Thank you. I will submit. Mr. Tony Lee Chair. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Deputy. Presidency stressed that officials must be um, willing to take up responsibility and deliver. The, can the chief executive elect, um, Mr. John Lee, said um, we should be result oriented. Improvements in the electoral system is not enough. We have to have um, equally patriotic, high quality civil service um, to work with us. In my constituency, uh, a lot of uh, my constituents uh, are civil servants, and I um, have uh, run against uh, civil servants in uh, for this seat, and I was also a civil servant. As my friends know, I always speak my mind. I often speak um, frankly upon a civil servant's mindset and attitude a problem. Last year, I made two, I put two questions in the council concerning the uh, C the management of civil service, and uh, the answers I received was uh, stunning. Among the 190,000 civil servants, only a few of them have been ordered to uh, retire because of um, continual substantive performance. For those uh, who had their salary increments deferred uh, because of substantive performance, there were only a dozen of them uh, every year. That is definitely not the actual number of performing civil servants. Many civil servants are enthusiastic and are willing to take up responsibility and to act. However, because of the culture, despite their hard work, they don't enjoy the fruits of their labor. As a result, many people choose to uh, give up and take up a, uh, a slack at, uh, attitude. Some choose to leave the civil service and uh, embark on new career in the private sector. As a result, we are seeing a deterioration of quality in the civil service as well as the efficiency, and people are getting more um, unhappy about the civil service. A common issue is the so-called uh, playing by the book um, culture, as mentioned in my amendment. Now, the procedures recommend um, make a pledge to uh, reply to uh, inquiries in three to four days. Often the departments would reply on the very last day, and correspondence would go on for several years and there is no progress of the matter. Still, the officials can tell you that um, he has upheld the pledges. For Even if the sector comes up with um, good suggestions, the department would say, this is not something that has been done before, and it is against the procedures. In the end, they would just advise you to stick to the old ways. In the past, we are worried. We were worried that um, giving the officials too much discretionary power would lead to this lead to corruption. Now we are worried about government officials not using their power, because um, if you do a good job, you may not get uh, praises, but if you uh, if you screw up, you would be uh, condemned. No matter your performance, you would get a salary increment. In the end, it, lead, it leads to the culture of doing less and making few mistakes. How can our society move forward? 
I suggest based promotion on meritocracy as well as a cross-departmental and cross-bureau uh, um, assessment. Directorate uh, officer uh, positions were created. There is no specific requirements in terms of capabilities. However, um, only civil servants from um, certain departments can be considered for the positions. And sometimes because um, of um, because uh, civil servants uh, cannot meet the um, uh, requirements of the position, they cannot even be considered. The government has promised to review the recruitment uh, process for senior management positions. However, only a few uh, positions have um, the recruitment process uh, reinvigorated. So I hope the government can speed up reform of the civil service recruitment system. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Rebecca Chen. Thank you, Deputy. We have um, had much discussion on improving governance. Since the re reunification, we have faced um, a lot of um, challenges um, like um, the coronavirus um, epidemic and the financial tsunami. We have a lot of structural problems, for example, housing shortage, and medical care, and the wealth gap. Social problems are so deep rooted that it undermined our people's uh, livelihood. We have a lot of major and um, long standing issues, and there is no way to tackle them. Some people think that this is because of the um, deteriorating efficiency of the civil service. Now, of course, um, there are views that the civil service system is problematic. As a result, um, the administrative branch is losing its efficiency. For many years, because of the um, conservative uh, promotional and salary increment system, civil servants would not act unless it is um, uh, uh, too pressing. The entire system is conservative, and it is not keeping abreast with time and the needs of the society. Of course, um, social issues are complicated. I don't think all criticisms against the civil service are fair. I have worked with many civil servants. Many of them are highly capable. In the past, our civil service has been lauded as one of the most efficient um, civil service in the world. So what has happened? Why does the public think that the civil service is no longer responding to, public, to the needs of the people? There are two problems. First, departments are working in silos because of the because of worries about um, the um, uh, separation of uh, duties. Departments would give people the, concept, uh, the percep per perception of uh, passing the buck. For example, uh, if uh, there are rest in the um, wet market, it would be the FEHD's problem. If the rodents uh, go to housing estates, it would become the housing um, department's problem. And in the park, it would be the LCSD's problem. However, uh, there is no solution in the end. These problems are more uh, prominent in terms of um, um, purviews, in terms of uh, matters requiring across the mental attention. For example, um, the um, food trucks and uh, so on. I think uh, the problem is the lack of motivation and incentive. There is no tools to incentivize the civil servants to uh, proactively address problems. Many people say that civil servants' uh, job is um, uh, foolproof. Or in other, in uh, from another perspective, you can say that people which uh, the civil servants would just follow the uh, rules and um, avoid um, taking up responsibility because in any event they would get the same pay. So. Um, that's why the civil service lacks um, vigorous. So I think uh, we have to make use of our policies and management tools to incentivize uh, civil service. I think departments should have KPIs to assess the performance of uh, civil servants. 
during the change um, of the um, legislative term, I pointed, I made this suggestion in my manifesto. The most important thing is how to make good use of the KPIs. Currently, there are performance indicators at, um, assessing civil servants' performance. We do have performance indicators. It's just that the um, function is not um, uh, is not um, uh, apparent. In the new term of the government, we have to make sure that we can incentivize the civil servants and make sure that um, people with merits and capabilities can be promoted. We should learn from other jurisdictions. For example, we should link a salary increment with performance and also use bonuses to uh, improve a morale. With these measures, we can reinvigorate the civil service system. I hope that the government would consider these suggestions. I so submit. Thank you. Secretary for the Civil Service. Deputy President, I thank Mr. Dominic Lee for moving this motion on reforming the civil service system to enhance government effectiveness. And 11 members are going to move amendments to the motion so that we can have a debate on how we can improve the civil service system to enhance government in effectiveness with the implementation of the national security law and improvement to the electoral system. We are now. Uh, in a new chapter, we can uh, focus on economic development and improving people's livelihood. As said uh, by the policy address 2021, we should map out a future for Hong Kong and we have new initiatives. Civil service are indispensable part of the government in implementing policies. So I'm just as uh, concerned as members how we can unleash the potential of the civil service so that we can achieve good governance. And then we can open a new chapter for Hong Kong in the new era. I noticed that members in general are concerned about the promotion system, performance management, reward and punishment, training abilities and competencies, attitude and esprit de corps of the civil service. I will now first talk about the uh, requirements on civil service under the uh, Patriots Ring Hong Kong principle. And I will also uh, elaborate on our performance management system. And I will listen to members of uh, views very patiently. The civil service is the backbone of our government, and they play a right, vital role in fully implementing one country, two system, and also the principle of eight patriots ring Hong Kong. Personally said that starting on the day of unification, Hong Kong has been subsumed into the country's governing system. Mr. Xia Baolong, Vice Chairman of uh, the National Committee of the CPPCC, spelled out five requirements for civil servants. Uh, they must uh, be competent in fully and ac accurately implementing one country, two system, competent in resolving conflicts and problems facing Hong Kong's development, competent in serving the practical needs of the people, competent in rallying and uniting all sectors, and competent and diligent in fulfilling their duties. And this is exactly what the chief exactly said in the 2021 policy address. And all civil servants should be loyal and dedicated to serve the uh, chief executive as well as the people of Hong Kong. The whole civil service already completed signing the declaration to uphold the basic law and be dedicated and loyal to the Hong Kong sale of the PLC and uh, to the government in 2021. And all permanent secretaries and heads of the department have taken the oath to the same effect. Now we're going to enhance training of civil service to build up values and loyalty in the civil service and to enhance the understanding of national affairs. As regards of whether our civil servants can be effective and efficient in resolving problems, I think that this is linked to our promotion system. I agree that our, our promotion should be linked to performance. In fact, uh, we have always uh, based on the system of uh, mer meritocracy. We are choosing the most suitable candidates to fulfill uh, our vacancies. And of course, uh, such will also help to uh, attract meritorious candidates to join the civil service. Now, we will look at the experience, the uh, character, the integrity of the civil service in considering 
promotion decisions where we will choose the most meritorious candidates. We never put weight on seniority. In fact, in different grades and ranks every year, we have our colleagues with different seniorities promoted. Those who have who, who are less senior but promoted is all because we have taken into account the performance. And you see that uh, departments are trying very hard to choose the best talents. In May this year, in the uh, PS panel of the council, I gave an account of the latest situation in our promotion system. Now we are going to implement a pilot scheme for the new selection and appointment mechanism. We will have both in-service appointment and also open recruitment so that people who are competent and dedicated can uh, compete for the post. For uh, in-service appointment, we'll widen as far as possible the pool of candidates for recruitment so that even those who have a, a short period of um, experience can apply for these posts. Uh, this will provide a good career ladder for civil servants. Civil service training is an important element of uh, our government. We have always attached significance to it. Established in December last year, the Civil Service College is an important initiative, initiative from the government for civil service training. The college has pressed ahead a full steam, the quality and quantity of training for the civil service, and has got a major, a few major programs to enhance the understanding of national development and constitutional order and the SAR leadership application of INT and also global vision and uh, also um, a horizon of our civil service. Today we just announced the appointment of the head of the civil service college. He will take up the important responsibility to formulate and spearhead training policies and strategies of the civil service. Under the principle of Patriots Ring Hong Kong, he will help us to um, integrate into the overall development of the country and to strengthen the effectiveness of governance. Members um, indicated their concern for a performance management of the civil service and the motion and amendments. In fact, this is a very important aspect, and this is to ensure that the most suited candidates are promoted to the post and to ensure smooth succession. The government is dedicated to maintain an effective performance management system. Civil servants of all ranks are subject to appraisals every year so that the performance can be effectively monitored and assessed. Appraising officers will conduct an objective and a fair assessment of uh, the civil servants concerned. And also uh, policies of bureaus are involved in the appraisal of permanent secretaries, deputy secretaries, and also heads of department. And they have a say in the appraisal of uh, these officers. We have about 1,500 Directorate offices in the 180,000 strong civil service, accounting from 0.8% of the total number. They are very often leaders in the civil service. Their performance is critical to the overall performance of the government. From time to time, we review the performance management system so that uh, their performance can be assessed in a timely and appropriate manner. We're going to set a working group uh, to review the appraisal arrangement of civil servants, and we will also consult the views of the PS Commission and also the staff and management side. I have served uh, the um, civil service for more than 36 years in different posts. I can say for sure that the majority of our civil servants are dedicated and diligent, committed to providing professional and quality people-oriented public service. Take the reason fifth wave of the epidemic as example, it has brought unprecedented challenges to our economy and the community. Now, all civil servants at all ranks have contributed in this fight against the epidemic. They have fully demonstrated how we can face up to these challenges and our esprit de cop. Now, to unleash the potential of our civil service and to enhance governance effectiveness, the key is to have a system that is applicable to 180,000 civil servants of different rate, grades and uh, ranks serving in over 350 grades in over 70 departments. I will 
welcome and listen modestly uh, what uh, suggestions and comments members have uh, for this very important topic. When members have all spoken, I will uh, give an overall response. Thank you. Mrs. Regina Ip. Thank you, Mr. Deputy. I speak in support of Mr. Dominic's motion. As for all the amendments, 11 in total, I see some real problem with uh, uh, some of the other amendments, so the new People's Party may not support some of the amendments. As the Secretary for the Civil Service pointed out, before or after the reunification, civil servants are the cornerstone of the gov governing team of the SAL government. Now, in the past three years, uh, we've seen much turbulence and uh, the pandemic, but still everyday government departments continue to work normally. And so we cannot overlook the contribution of civil servants in that respect. Now, we've uh, read the amendments proposed by different uh, members, and um, that's the reason for that, because um, in the public, among the public, many believe that uh, in terms of the performance management, promotion, and other systems of uh, managing civil servants, there's need for reform. We need to streamline certain procedures. And with promotion, we should focus more on performance rather than seniority. And some believe the public ought to be involved in some aspects of the management of civil servants, and I see a problem with that. And I'd like to point out a few points too. Um, now, members have proposed different amendments to the motion. So since the reunification, um, it seems that some members have some misunderstanding about the role of civil servants. Some members have uh, suggested that uh, uh, political parties should be more involved in the promotion and appointment of uh, directorate officers. Now, I left the government some 20 years ago. Mr. Lai Tong Kwok left just uh, a few years ago, so you could ask Mr. Lai uh, Kwok, Tong Kwok. Uh, political appointees only write the appraisal reports for permanent secretaries. And for other civil servants, their appraisal reports are prepared by the permanent secretaries and others. So it's a r rather professional arrangement. But if uh, the political appointees are not involved in the writing the appraisals of uh, the, of, uh, of officers uh, beneath the rank of permanent secretaries, it's true that he wouldn't know. They would know nothing about the performance of civil servants. Of course not. They are smart. They come into contact with these uh, other officers every day, so they know how they perform. So uh, if if you say that civil servants are not performing well, it's not because political appointees are not involved in the appraisals. Um, you know, the chief secretary or or the financial secretary could tell the chief executive who's working well, who's not, because they work together for some uh, five years. And some may say that uh, the political appointee should be the controlling officer of the policy bureau. That means that political appointees or, or, or uh, directors bureau would uh, manage the finances of the com uh, uh, manage the budget of the bureau. Well, if you ask the new appointees, they probably want to do that. Uh, for example, a bureau may be in charge of over a hundred billion dollars of public uh, expenditure. The 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 uh, director of bureau wouldn't want to do that manage that. So it seems so. So some of these men show that um, colleagues may not know exactly how the government works. And say for uh, um, the uh, PSC, uh, it may sit on the board of some of promotions, but not on the uh, disciplinary proceedings. Now there are now eight members on the PSC who are mem uh, elites of the community. They are not ex civil servants. So I don't believe, therefore. We need to further expand the membership of the PSC uh, in terms of its involvement in the promotion and appointment of um, directorate officers. Now, some say that uh, we have to have regard to the views of the public or an independent um, committee in um, deciding on promotion. I see a huge problem with that because there are diverse views among the public. Um, now, of course, there are sometimes uh, uh, opinion polls on uh, rating the performance of different uh, directors of bureau, but then these are all anonymous uh, assessments. 
And so it's hard really to consult public views. And if you want an independent committee each time, uh, for example, how can the com ensure the committee is independent? For example, just now Mr. Andrew Lamb uh, declared interest that his wife is a civil servant. So if uh, some of these um, committee members are not independent, they will not be fair to the um, individuals concerned. Now, okay, the amendments here are to reflect view the concerns of the public, but then we must make sure we don't uh, destroy the civil service system with some undue uh, proposals. Mr. U Ms. Eunice Young, I speak in support of the um, original motion moved by Mr. Dominic Lee. Now, um, we've always been adopting the British uh, government system, so uh, the focus is on execution. And then there's a need to observe due process that's important. And then, um, you know, administrative officers are core of uh, the governing team. Uh, they are posted to different the departments and bureau so they could accrue experience and they will be promoted um, uh, gradually to higher ranks. Uh, for, uh, in the past, uh, administrative officers are considered elites because there is um, merit in this system. But then now civil servants focus too much on due process. They are being uh, bureaucratic and rigid. Now, so they just follow the procedures. They are not flexible. To, uh, they are not there to help the public resolve matters. And, and if they do that, then they could be promoted. So that's why over time, there are more problems are created in the culture of the civil servants. So they become too conservative and passive. They just want to make sure they don't make mistakes and so they could, um, they were playing sailing to retirement. But now, the, you know, the uh, global sea is changing rapidly. The, we have the pandemic and on uh, livelihood issues become rather complicated in Hong Kong. When there are in serious um, major um, issues, if uh, civil servants stay so rigid and bureaucratic, of course, we're not, going to ab we're not able to see the results we want. So the government needs to realize that, if um, uh, so, the, and make sure that uh, we don't put the horse before the cart before the horse by just focusing one aspect of government, uh, civil service performance. And the epidemic has exposed the problems with um, the civil service system. We need to think out of the box. We need to uh, re um, break out of different uh, rules and regulations so that uh, civil servants are bold and are able to shoulder their responsibilities and doing their job. And also with the promotion of civil servants, we have to consider the integrity, the competence, and experience of the individual. We have to consider their educational qualifications and other qualifications. At the same time, we have to consider the work performance of um, these um, individuals before they're promoted. So that's why some members have proposed amendments, uh, say, on uh, digital literacy and capabilities. Well, it's not just about civil servants uh, being able to master digital skills. I think even for the directors of Bureau and the whole government as a whole, they should be able to make use of big data for analysis. They need to be make good use of the computers to enhance their efficiency. So for the Dr. Johnny Ng's amendment, I cannot support it because he um, mentions um, the promotion mechanism should include considerations such as digital literacy and capabilities. Well, that could be an indicator, but there should be an indicator that should uh, allow people to become promoted on that basis, so I can't support it. Now, the CE, like Mr. John Lee, has proposed a result-oriented um, governance um, structure, a uh, philosophy, and uh, I have great expectation now, for um, KPIs, that means that they could complete certain tasks. Uh, that we consider the quality of work and um, performance of the individual. So there have to be a proper uh, carrot and stick system. And so there must be criteria to follow for measuring um, results. So we must make uh, um, civil servants understand that their integrity, their competence, um, their and so on, would be the basis of uh, assessing their performance. I could give you an example. There's been reform in Singapore on the civil service system. So the civil service um, college has become an independent statutory body with its own board of governors. So maybe the government could also consider something similar. We could have something like a public administration institute uh, in close collaboration with a tertiary institution. And then uh, they could be in 
uh, train talents that way. And then the government must also um, have new mindset, it must make good use of big data and computer to help them do their work. And then it's important that we uh, train talents on public administration and policies. This will help to improve the attitude of um, officials. Now with the, our discussion today, our debate today, I hope we're able to improve the abilities of administrative officers. Thank you. Mr. Ronick Chen. Mr. Deputy, I thank Doc, Doc, Mr. Dominic Lee for moving this motion because we've been um, debating civil service uh, reform over the past period, and there are 11 members who moved amendments. I thank them too. Now, this is uh, to uh, it's about, all about enhancing governance. The uh, government, the council, will soon be considering the reorganisation proposal. And apart from that, we need a um, team of civil servants who are loyal, who are patriotic, who love Hong Kong, uh, who are, are committed, and who will shoulder the responsibilities and so on. But then there is never an accountability system for civil servants. That's why there is this mentality of the iron rice bow. And the civil servants, you know, when it comes to uh, misconduct, it's usually just about um, um, dereliction of duty. Or if uh, some civil servants have committed serious of, of uh, criminal offence, then they will be dismissed. Otherwise, they won't be dismissed. But then often, uh, I know civil servants will abuse the discipline proceedings. It will take years before there's any result, and it's inconceivable in the private sector. Now, um, the Hong Kong Macau Affairs, of, uh, director, affairs Office Director has said that um, 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 you know, for those in uh, in the government, they must be able to do work to deliver, and then for uh, heads of departments and permanent secretaries, they have to be the competent persons in the post. This is key, really, to the success of government. After the delivery of the 2021 policy address. Um, in, at a press conference, uh, Mrs. Curry Lam, the chief executive, said that uh, the, um, the Hong Kong government lacked people who want to get things done. Now, she's been in the government for decades, so her observation has to be right. Now, most people just... Uh, uh, now, promotion is mostly by seniority, so people just have to wait and they'll be eventually promoted. And then there are no key KPIs uh, to um, improve so, uh, quality of service, so that breeds uh, bureaucracy, uh, um, you know, passing of buck and of the buck and so on. Now we don't want civil servants to just stick to the rules. So every year when we appraise the performance of civil servants, there should be at least an element of whether someone has adopted um, a new mindset in uh, delivering. Uh, uh, um, results. If so, that should be recorded, and it would be an important um, criteria to cons criteria to consider in promotion in the future. This will then encourage civil servants to uh, embrace reform. This is already being done in the private sector. Now, in Western countries, they have a um, cabinet system with uh, uh, political parties taking turns to govern the country. It really does not fit Hong Kong. Uh, now, because the civil service system is inefficient, and, 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 and so there were new measures introduced in 2002, and then and so the political appointment system was introduced, or um, and the appointments are made by the central authorities. But apart from the secretary for the civil service, the secretary for justice, for other politically appointed officials, usually they would not be involved in the appointment, or promotion, and discipline matters of civil servants. Now, if we are able to. Uh, um, be involved in the promotion of your subordinates is important factor to make um, subordinates uh, um, perform, uh, put in their best in their work. You know, political appointees uh, are not involved in such a promotion matters, uh, but in a uh, short period of five years, they uh, they have to uh, adapt to work with such a, a colleague. So it's really tough. Now we have an executive like government, but uh, we need a strong ex. Executive. Otherwise, there's no way we could have executive-led government. So that's why, as a promotion, uh, motion uh, suggests, we must uh, reform the promotion dismissal systems of civil servants. So we put the best persons with the best abilities in the po in the relevant post. And if and after we have improved the electoral system, there will be a better. Um, 
environment for the government to um, for, um, to implement its policies. And then we would like a civil service team that would really uh, do work and address the deep-seated conflicts in Hong Kong. So that's why I will support the original motion and some of the amendments. Thank you. Mr. Lai Tong Kwok. Mr. Deputy, I support the motion on uh, promotion of civil servants. The official uh, line is uh, people with the right uh, qualifications and uh, integrity and character and performance are considered, unless uh, there are people of the same rank with similar uh, qualities, they will not give any weighting to seniority. The effect is very often promotion is based on seniority. Why do we have this? Because in the government, usually there won't be any interviews held uh, for a promotion exercise. They only have a paper board. So uh, a selection board will consider the appraisal reports. So they rely on appraisal reports written in the last three years, and then a group of members will sit down together and consider those appraisal reports and decide who deserve the promotion. In general, they will always get this um, very effective comment. There is no actual score. And as a result, seniority plays a role. So now you have uh, to understand uh, the appraisal system of the civil service. Now, usually, uh, for an appraisal report, it will start with a description of details and then a few um, a dozen or so different items uh, with grades A to E uh, for the appraising officer to uh, take. And then there will uh, be a box for writing down short comments. And there will be half a page or so for writing, writing down general comments. And then there will be an overall grading, very outstanding, outstanding, etc. So uh, after that is done, there will be a signature of the appraising officer, and the report will be submitted uh, to a countersign officer, two ranks about that of uh, the appraising officer. And then the appraisee will uh, get a chance to read through the appraisal report. If he agrees, he can sign it. If it doesn't, he can express his views in writing or ask for a review. And then uh, the final appraisal report will get to the head of the grade. How come the whole thing is done so effectively, efficiently? Because uh, there are annual appraisals and you have to write reports for all your subordinates. So it's a very tiring exercise. And if you do not give a good report, then a lot of um, follow-up action will uh, take place. So uh, this is this joke in the civil service. If you really hate a certain subordinator, you should give him an outstanding report so that he can uh, be transferred to another post. So unless um, uh, uh, an appraisal is really uh, very bad, otherwise uh, the appraisal reports every, ev everyone gets is very similar. So you have to determine the um, promotion uh, by means of seniority. So now if you want to get a promotion, it will be based on your seniority. You want a pay rise, you wait for your uh, pay increment. This is a common phenomenon. Now, although uh, there is uh, this uh, civil service uh, regulation that if you do not perform well, your increment can be deferred or suspended. But on average, only 15 or so were subject to this sanction. As for the annual pay adjustment, or uh, whether you do you deliver or not, it won't make a difference. Is a pay adjustment based on the established mecha mechanism to improve uh, the system? First, uh, you must do away with this uh, paperboard arrangement for promotion exercise. We can gradually increase interviews. Now, uh, those who have the potential to be promoted should sit in front of a promotion board, and so uh, the performance can be assessed. And we should also reform. 
this current reward system, uh, such as uh, the commendation by civil service and also the commendation scheme uh, for outstanding civil servants. Now, oh, they are given a certificates, a gold pins, etc. I think such commendation records uh, should be included in the appraisal report so that there will be more incentive for civil servants to um, deviate from uh, the established procedures. Madam Doreen Kong, thank you. I support uh, Mr. Dominic Lee's motion and other amendments. Now, all reforms should have clear objectives. Now, to reform the civil service, we should discuss with different parties to agree on the uh, direction and objectives and also expectations. We should not just discuss with stakeholders. We should go to the community and discuss with our people so that uh, we can uh, hold true to our um, intention of serving the public. And then uh, professionals uh, should have a say so that all the reform measures uh, will be justified. Now, we should uh, mobilize the initiative of civil servants so that they feel that they are masters of uh, Hong Kong. We should enhance mobility and flexibility. If we do not have an effective reward and punishment system, then there is no way to motivate civil servants. We should adjust the reward and mechanism system so that um, we can motivate our civil servants and incentivize them to work harder. And then we should clearly delineate the division of labor and also the mode of communication coordination among departments. Now, poor communication among government departments is a longstanding uh, deficiency within the government. So in this review, we should rationalize and do away with the obstacles of uh, coordination and synergy. And then we should promote a good communication among civil servants serving different departments. Now, if we can do this, then we can set up KPIs for uh, different areas of work. Otherwise, uh, the reform will be counterproductive. And uh, we should promote innovation within the civil service. Now, people uh, consider AOs as um, generalists. They have no knowledge of um, INT and new industries. AOs should uh, be uh, professionals with a good INT sense so that they can formulate strategies. They must not be too rigid or uh, conventional so that uh, they can improve the civil service. And in the selection of uh, civil servants, we should uphold the principle of patriots governing Hong Kong. And we should have a breakdown of this requirement. And in the selection of uh, civil servants, we should take care of this detail. We must have a scientific way to select uh, talents who are competent and patriots. And the government should also reform uh, its um, system to attract talents to join the civil service. Hong Kong has uh, taken pride in, used to take pride in its uh, professional and efficient civil service, but now it has been under great criticism. At the end of the day, we want long-term stability and prosperity of Hong Kong and everyone to live happily in Hong Kong. So what the public care most is the uh, pragmatic skills and ability of civil servants uh, to do good for the people. All reforms are difficult and they cannot be achieved overnight. The government must uh, reflect on its current situation and a few uh, like uh, being masters of uh, Hong Kong with your remarks. I uh, thank you, Chair. Mr. Heck, Chen Hecken. Thank you, Mr. Deputy. Uh, they are close to 200,000 members in the civil service. It's natural that some are outstanding and some are doing not so well. However, we cannot uh, 
overlook the contribution by the civil service simply because there are uh, some uh, bad apples in the civil service. They have contributed a lot to Hong Kong, and uh, they uh, have won world acclaim in uh, there being a clean civil service. However, sometimes we see that they are rather rigid in performance of duties, and uh, there are also some inadequacies. I said um, sometimes the community criticized the promotion and uh, reward and punishment system of the civil service. I have been in public service for uh, Almost two decades, I have worked with uh, civil servants of different ranks. I have the impression that most civil servants are very dedicated in going about their duties. Of course, I've been frustrated uh, by some frontline or senior civil servants, and this is not the first time I criticize some of them in this chamber. However, the most important point in this motion is. Uh, there are bureaucratic um, um, thinking within the civil service, and then some civil servants are lack political loyalty. These issues must be addressed. When it comes to reforming the civil service, I think uh, we should look at it from three aspects. First, uh, the pay. Second, promotion. And three, uh, dismissal. The community has the general impression that these three things are not packed to the performance of civil servants. Recently, the government are saying that new positions would be created in the new term of government and that civil servants are going to enjoy a pay rise. We have strong repercussions in the community. This is exactly because of the three areas I just mentioned. So the secretary or the administration must think of a way to ensure that civil servants' performance live up to expectations of the public. And you really have to think about the three points I just uh, outlined. I want to discuss in particular the appointment and promotion of civil servants. Yes, uh, they have a long uh, established and proven mechanism, but then when it comes to the promotion of civil servants to some very senior posts in particular, uh, the mode of operation is very exclusive. For instance, at the ranks of um, heads of department or permanent secretaries, usually uh, the vacancies are filled by internal promotion. Is that the best approach? Of course, the government will say that by means of uh, internal promotion, uh, the uh, Candidates who fill the post will know best at the relevant policies and also uh, government's operation. I don't know whether you notice that there is a post, a Commissioner for Sports. The post was filled by open competition. That was a very good way. I'm not saying that the current commissioner, who is a civil servant, is not doing a good job. Rather, if you decide from day one that the post will be filled by a civil servant, then you have ruled out meritorious candidates out there, and you will have a smaller field to choose from. Now, it can be a general secretary of a National Sports Association or a retired uh, athlete. Will his performance be certainly uh, worse uh, than uh, than a civil servant, not necessarily. You have ruled out some potential candidates. So I'm of the view that open recruitment can help your promotion system. First, you have an outsider to compete with uh, what's already, who is already in the civil service. This will promote a beneficial competition. There can be a new um, uh, impetus for growth. Thank you. Mr. Frank Ying An, Deputy, when it comes to the performance issue of the civil service, I think many members of the public would agree that there are lots of capable civil servants within the government who are willing to take up responsibilities, no matter um, which 
departments they are serving in, they have come across um, a lot of hurdles and has gained a lot of ex experience in different uh, departments. And these are their assets. They are willing and capable to get things done. Still, why is there a negative perception that the administrative efficiency is on the drop? There are always criticisms that civil servants would shy away from responsibilities. I don't think this is about a personal merit. It is that they lack incentives to get things done. I think it is definitely the security of the job that gives rise to such a mindset and hence the negative perception in the public. In the public's eyes, civil servant a job in the civil service is very secure. No matter how serious the epidemic is, the employer uh, the employee will not be sacked and they will not be and the employees as uh, civil servants will not be asked to go on um, unpaid leave. And there are always salary increments according to the pay trend survey. Because of the security of the job as well as the uh, culture to get promoted based on seniority and the lack of correlation between uh, work performance and promotion. In the eyes of the public, civil servants would eschew from challenges and responsibilities. And over time, um, civil servants would lose their proactiveness. Under the epidemic, many employees are facing unemployment and underemployment. Many people are just looking to keep their job. They are not asking for a pay rise. They are just they would they are just begging their boss not to have them um, go on unpaid leave. In the private sector, employees must have the will, drive, and competence to get things delivered because the key performance indicator is the actual work performance. When the pay trend indicator for senior civil, civil servants was announced, it caused a lot of perplexion and shock in the public. It is so out of touch with the reality. Under the epidemic and the bad economy, no one has expected the prospect of a huge pay rise for senior civil servants. And it also shows the um, show how the public, how this satisfies the public is um, concerning civil, senior civil servants' performance under the epidemic. I think. The pay trend indicator of of civil servants should be uh, should uh, be made uh, with reference to the private sector. Key performance indicators should be set up and link civil servants' performance with their pay, especially for senior civil servants. More performance indicators should be set for them. That is in line with the public expectation. Salary. Decisions should be made in relation to the performance of the departments and the bureaus that they are serving in. It can ensure that officials are taking up responsibility for their policies and uh, to foster a culture of um, civil servants having the will, drive, competence, and ability to deliver results. I suggest the government set up fair performance indicators to link bureau and department performances with salary increments and um, start with the senior civil servants. Thank you. Mr. Chen Siu Hong. Thank you, Deputy. First of all, I thank Mr. Dominic Lee for moving the original motion. It gives us an opportunity to discuss the hot topic of uh, civil service system. All along, we have a clean, efficient, and um, capable civil service 
and we are proud of this. However, in several in recent years, um, the public has taken on a negative perception on the civil service, especially in since year 2019 and during the epidemic, um, the civil service has disappointed the public. And the undeniably, there are some civil servants who are who um, are not taking up responsibilities, but the majority of them is uh, are capable. Hong Kong's success. Um, uh, was due to was mainly due to uh, the uh, capability of our quality civil service. So we cannot deny the um, the uh, contribution made by the civil service because of uh, some black sheep. Concerning the motion moved by Mr. Dominic Lee, uh, I think reforming the civil service system is uh, timely. With the improvements of the electoral system and uh, the implementation of uh, patriots administering Hong Kong, we have we have entered. Um, a new era with good governance. We have to keep abreast with time, and the civil service should um, um, humbly reflect on themselves in order to meet the expectation of the public. On reforming the civil service system to enhance government effectiveness, many good suggestions uh, were raised in the original motion and the amendments. I have three points to make. First, we have to break the mindset of um, complacency. Like the president, like President Xi said, we have to allow um, the uh, meritorious people to get promoted and get um, and uh, and uh, demote uh, those underperforming uh, civil servants. We should um, correct the mindsets of doing less to make fewer mistakes and doing nothing uh, to make no mistakes. It is because uh, the lack of incentive. The incentives, as well as the lack of uh, punishment for underperforming civil servants, because of senior, because um, promotion is based on seniority, it is um, not based on performance. As a result, a culture of in inactiveness um, has um, come to be. We should set up key performance indexes, like um, the indexes adopted by the corporate. Um, sector and base uh, promotion and salary increments on performance indexes to make the system fairer and encourage civil servants to do their job and ensure efficiency and um, quality. This has been done by Singapore and South Korea and the mainland. Hong Kong should do this as well, which introduce competition into the civil, surf civil service as well. For senior level vacancy, they are mainly filled by internal promotion or um, redeployments. Of course, there are benefits. However, when there is a succession problem uh, in the civil service, people without merit would be promoted, and it would uh, dent the morale of the entire civil service. I'm glad that the uh, Secretary for Civil Service mentioned that some positions will be opened up for public comp for open competition to introduce uh, talents into the civil service. We are looking forward to the results. Deputy, over the years, um, there has been ample discussion on reforming the civil service system. However, the government did not um, conduct a major operation on the civil service system because uh, because of the worry of um, the civil service and morale. It is time we do that. I don't agree with the uh, amendments moved by Mr. King Lee Wong about uh, impose, imposing a nationality restriction because it is highly controversial and it would, it would be against the basic law. And concerning um, the suggestion to uh, in include a digital uh, literacy as a uh, consideration, I agree with that. We have to civil servants should be uh, on the forefront of uh, digitalization uh, efforts. I so submit. Dr. Te Chi Yun. Deputy, for some time in the past, the civil service was lauded as highly efficient, professional, and clean. However, um, the performance of the civil service um, has been highly controversial over the past few years. It is uh, quite perplexing because um, the most uh, capable persons have been recruited into our civil service system. 
why did they get uh, such comments when they have entered the government? First, the political appointees are not being held accountable. After the reunification, Mr. Tong Shi Wa, the first chief executive, uh, proposed the uh, political account accountability system. A um, senior government officials' positions are created to break away from um, the culture of um, eschewing from responsibility. However, um, the government officials still work in um, silo, and there has been no change in the culture. We haven't seen political appointees taking up more responsibility. That's why the state's leaders have advised officials in Hong Kong to take up more responsibility. In the paper submitted by the um, Secretary for Civil Service to the LESCO concerning um, civil service reform, for political appointees who made a serious mistakes in terms of implementation of policies, the reports suggest that the political appointees should step down. In the past few years, several secretaries have stepped down because of um, their underwhelming performance. But that was mainly due to the um, pressure from the media. There is no awarding and punishment system for political employees. For example, in the fifth wave, Residential care home for the elderly people have been hard hit. Tens of thousands of elderly people were affected by the epidemic. During the uh, during the epidemic, um, political appointees um, were passing the buck, and no one was held accountable for the mess up. That is disappointing. We think. There should be KPIs for political appointees and senior government officials to assess their performance. The second problem is the culture of doing less, making fewer mistakes, and doing nothing, making no mistakes. Officials just follow the rules to the to the words. The um, guidelines and guidelines of the policies are, are hard targets, and they um, cannot meet the um, actual needs of the public. Elderly people have to wait for a long time before they can get help. Same for the unemployed and underemployed. Is it because of the lack of um, uh, flexibility in implementation of measures? Many people think that officials are serving uh, the procedures, but not the public. By following the rules, it is uh, the safer ways to go for uh, officials, and it is uh, less likely for them to make mistakes. Bureaus and departments are working in silo, and they are not um, rising up to the needs of the people. The chief executive-elect has stressed that we should be result-oriented. I hope that uh, through the we and us mindset, officials can work together and get things done. I hope that the, up the um, incoming chief executive can really achieve what he has promised. And make sure that uh, the civil service is really serving the public. Officials should do things and do things right. Thank you. Mr. Chen Kim Paul, thank you, Mr. Deputy uh, President. Now, uh, the civil service in Hong Kong has always been renowned as uh, being highly efficient, professional, and honest. But then uh, that was before the reunification. But after the reunification, the media have oft has often questioned the effectiveness of the civil servants. I think that's because of the system. And that's why today the, this debate is uh, on the system. Uh, we, we talk about the civil service system. It was uh, introduced uh, from the, uh, the UK. Now everything was to go by procedures, and at the time, you know, things were weren't changing quickly, and also there was much less a political struggle, and that's why before the unification, the civil service system worked well, and for stability, the uh, SL government adopted the entire system without major reforms. But then. Um, there have been major changes in the uh, external environment, so that's why we're seeing the flaws of the system. 
with the uh, um, information explosion era, uh, civil servants still keep to the books, and so they're not keeping up with the changing times. And so, and then they also the departments also work in silo. That's why we often uh, hear the government saying that they need to set up interdepartmental working group. That means because the, um, departments are not able to work well together, and also um, civil servants just keep to the books. They uh, follow the procedures, and whether they succeed or not, they are uh, not held uh, accountable, and that's why there's mo motivation for them to do better. And uh, civil servants are uh, now um, like a permanent uh, tenure. As long as they don't make mistakes, they won't uh, be dismissed. So they just make sure they don't uh, make mistakes, and then if and then they could uh, wait for retirement. And then for some civil servants, because they want to protect themselves, so they are creating more systems or more excuses and leading people down the garden path and passing the buck. And some of, uh, of um, civil servants have complained to me that they uh, wanted to do get something done. They begged departments to support them, but nothing got done. And then in the fight against the epidemic, we see that there are many officers, including um, um, uh, officers in charge, they work very hard. But then at the front line, there was always chaos. Uh, for example, in the initial stage of um, um, restriction testing declaration, there were always uh, uh, problems that shows that the front line could not really work well together. And we, we said this because uh, for a long time, the opposition camp has been um, standing in the way of gov governance, so the government uh, was not able to make any reform. But now we are in a better position, so uh, it's the right time to um, consider reform. I support Mr. Dominic Lee's motion. I think we should bring in, um, uh, we should have um, work performance linked to promotion and as well as um, pay. And certainly, then we could um, um, build the culture of civil servants uh, trying to perform. But then, at the same time, um, we, we, um, civil servants have to listen, follow the uh, reasonable orders of their seniors, and they must uh, be able to work closely with other departments. They shouldn't be working in the silo. Only then could we get things done. Finally, I must remind the SA government that we must not underestimate the um, challenges of um, making reform possible. And so the greatest challenge is about implementing reform. Now, I think with the support of the community and with the persuasion of the government, I believe most civil servants are uh, understanding. But then uh, the, civil, the civil service is a huge team. So there may be civil, civil service groups that may ch um, char uh, challenge the government legally, uh, citing the basic law protection. So that's why the government needs to have proper communication with the civil service groups and the civil servants in general. And they must also seek the support of the, gov uh, the community before reforms could be carried out successfully. Mr. Leung Meng Kong. Thank you, President. Mr. John Lee, the CEO-elect, uh, said in his manifesto that uh, he would go for results-oriented culture to uh, improve our competitiveness and that will address the deep-seated uh, conflicts in the community. So the government and the community must work together. And within the government, they must stand united, and then they could uh, um, address the various uh, tough issues such as housing, youth issues, and so on. And also. Um, if we want to deliver on the new government's manifesto, apart from prison officials, the entire civil service must stand commit, stay committed to. I agree with the uh, original motion. The, Mr. Dominic pointed out that, um, civil, that there is a culture of uh, doing less to make mistakes uh, because of the current system. So we need to reform the system so that uh, the civil servants will also make progress um, together with the governing team. Now, very often, the civil servants are criticized as being inefficient. They are slow to respond to issues. And then, um, for example, the ombudsman's uh, report in 2020 said that uh, there are still some 23,000 uh, cases of seepage not dealt with. Some cases took eight to seven years, uh, still not completed. And then there are some cases that took four years for investigation. So uh, these are huge figures, and that's why it gives a bad impression to the public. If, uh, the, the, if a department has uh, KPIs, and then there are specific measures to record the work of the department, and then um, departments will be driven to uh, p um, meet their performance pledge. And more importantly, departments must be able to 
be seen to be working. Now, the uh, department's uh, performance uh, is important and that is related to civil servants. Civil servants must have problem-solving skills and they must have the right work attitude. Civil servants uh, uh, have to be embraced annually, usually, is um, the appraisal is done by uh, supervising officers, and if uh, the public are not happy, they could make complaints to the department before civil servants. If there are complaints against them, the revenue department will handle that. But then often we hear the public saying that, well, the government may uh, receive complaints, but then the civil servants uh, remain the same. Now, for private uh, uh, companies, uh, there's need for um, customer review, and then uh, perhaps, uh, uh, for example, like um, the cross boundary point. Um, many departments uh, on the mainland have similar um, arrangements. Say there's a button for you uh, to to uh, rate the performance of uh, of say the customs clearing officers. So can we have a similar system here? We uh, if we could if I ask some um, customers to uh, rate performance, then that will help us to. Uh, see where there's room for improvement and there could be targeted training as a result. This will help to enhance efficiency and quality of service. The original motion proposes that one of the important aspects of re reform is that uh, pay, now with pay increase, we have to consider the uh, uh, now there there is problem with uh, there's problem because the promotion is by seniority and also pay is linked to um, pay scale. Uh, so we need to still um, motivate civil servants, we need to have a proper reward and punishment system. And promotion must not be by seniority, but rather it should be linked to a performance. So those who perform well, they will be promoted, they will get a pay rise. And if they don't perform well, they should be given warnings. And re if there are reputed warnings and still there's no improvement, there could be pay reduction or even demotion. And that way uh, we could uh, encourage uh, civil servants to put in their best in their work. Now we've been seeing increasing and more complex social problems, so it's important that there's proper training of civil servants. That's why the government's now set up the Civil Service College to train civil servants on national security and basic law. It will help uh, to enhance the awareness of um, national security among civil servants and support that. So now we have this new era of governance. I hope uh, civil servants will be working better and they are become more professional and then they could uh, uh, promote Hong Kong's uh, integration into the national development and then they could help uh, Hong Kong address all these uh, poli uh, livelihood issues. Thank you. Mr. Rock Chen. President, I would like to thank Mr. Dominic Lee for moving the motion on reforming the civil service system to enhance government effectiveness. This gives us the opportunity to consider enhancing the civil service system to meet our actual needs. Now, since the fifth uh, wave of the outbreak, Civil servants have been under unprecedented pressure. There have been insufficient manpower, so say hotlines were not answered, and then um, there were not enough people to distribute um, um, uh, anti-epidemic packs and so on. And even um, uh, there's criticism that um, the rodent control in uh, control trap index of the FEHE could not reflect the real problem. Yesterday there was a concert, um, online booking case. Now, um, so it's real name registration online, but once the system, uh, booking system started, it uh, was overwhelmed, so it collapsed. So uh, it's the same case with civil servants. So we see problems because there are falls in the system. Many say that um, civ uh, civil servant jobs are like the iron rice bowls, and then promotion is more by seniority. And unless someone has committed a really extremely serious uh, mistake, uh, the no one will be dismissed. So that's why uh, civil servants um, embrace this culture of doing less to make few mistakes. Because when people, well, actually, when people first join the civil service, they want to serve the public. And if a civil civil servants have to be dedicated and be uh, responsible, uh, be accountable to the SL. SAL and also uh, in the relevant code, uh, paragraph three point C seven, civil servants have to be loyal to the SAL government and and perform their duties. But then, if uh, civil servants are being perfunctory, of course they cannot uh, help Hong Kong to enter a new era. We want a um, highly effective 
and dedicated to a team. Well, and then I have the following suggestions. First, we need to um, set P KPAs. We need to set the work targets for civil servants every year for them to uh, achieve. Yeah, for those who could not achieve the KPIs, there has to be a punishment system. For example, warnings, or even demotion. And for those who have outstanding performance, they could be promoted. There's no need to consider seniority. Now, we need to have a, a proper reward and punishment system uh, to boost morale and improve e efficiency. And secondly, we need to have uh, proper training. Civil servants need to get five things right. First, they have to aim, they must be uh, willing to work, and they must put in their best to do their work. And secondly, they are uh, able to make good use of resources to uh, do their work. And then they have to be uh, courageous enough to get things done instead of just, um, you know, focusing uh, as just in just of, um, you know, minding their own business. And then um, also among departments, uh, they, uh, the civil servants have to be flexible and work with each other. And finally, uh, before they get things done, they must not, um, 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 you know, mess things up. And also for uh, principal officials, they must be given the power to appraise the performance of the civil servants working under them. And then they should be involved in promotion decisions of civil servants in the, under them. Otherwise, I don't see where there is a mechanism for um, principal officials to manage the performance of civil servants working under them. And how, and how else are they able to ensure continuity of policies? Now, um, in the C elects manifesto, Mr. Johnny said that for the new government, it must um, make further reforms. It must uh, form a, a team that is uh, highly efficient. They must uh, embrace the spirit of we and us so they work together to resolve matters and they will work uh, with synergy. So I support the original motion. Thank you. Mr. Duncan Chiu. Thank you, Mr. President. And I thank Ms. Dominic Mr. Dominic Lee for moving this motion on reforming the civil service system. The government recently announced that there will be open recruitment for the Director of uh, Information Services, uh, Commissioner for Sports, and also uh, the um, head of the Civil Service College. I welcome these moves so that we can um, leverage the latest development in INT, and we can also introduce some um, experts in INT into the government to lead the uh, INT-related developments to develop Hong Kong into a world INT hub and a smart city. In 2004, there was a round of government reorganization. The OGCIO was set up by open recruitment. The government has appointed so far four OGOs uh, from the market into the civil service. But currently, the incumbent, Mr. Victor Lam, was promoted from within the civil service. I agree that they have uh, wide expertise in INT and they have experience uh, working in uh, local international companies in Hong Kong and they have uh, made achievements within uh, their office. And as for the um, Commission for INT, since uh, its establishment, the head has been filled by civil servants. Now, in improving the current appointment system, I hope we can uh, tap uh, the talents in the uh, community so that we can have outstanding INT experts to uh, lead our development here so that uh, we can develop into a hub. And can the government use uh, this experience to review the arrangements for other departments? So uh, for heads of departments or director grade officers, if they need um, um, expertise in different areas, perhaps at they can be filled by open recruitment. And I think it is already a um, common uh, discussion that uh, we should set up KPIs for civil servants. Even the CE elect Mr. Johnny said that the government's uh, ability should be boosted, and he's going to uh, be result oriented in his uh, objectives in governance. And within 100 days, 
of uh, the um, new government, uh, there will be result-oriented objectives set up for the government. So um, many uh, members have spoken, support the introduction of KPIs for civil servants, because there are too many comments that our civil servants are not performing up to standard. They are too bureaucratic and rigid, and um, um, they uh, have this very uh, passive mentality of uh, doing uh, less to avoid mistakes, and the civil service cannot keep up with uh, the times. To make this system more flexible and meet the needs of society, we must improve our performance management system. I agree with uh, many members who have spoken on uh, KPIs. Recently, many countries have set up KPIs in order to enhance uh, government effectiveness. Our country introduced uh, this in 2017. Uh, different provinces and municipalities have got KPIs for their governments. Uh, in the U.S., uh, San Francisco introduced the development of a smart city there, and different posts have got KPIs established. And in 2010, Malaysia started a 10-year economic development, and they also set up KPIs. Singapore has got KPIs in 1988. They introduced performance-linked pay for civil servants. In 2022, they have, again, performance-based um, increments to reward outstanding civil servants. I think these are good experience for us to learn from. Uh, uh, there are strong repercussions when it comes to the proposed civil service pay uh, with um, the open recruitment of uh, the uh, head of uh, the um, OGO, uh, head of OGO. Well, we can use KPIs as a criteria, but we must have a competitive remuneration package so that we can uh, recruit uh, experts to join the government. I support Mr. Dominic Lee's motion as regards uh, Mr. Uh, Chiu, you have to stop. Mr. Jeffrey Lamb, thank you, Mr. President. The central government has expressed time and again in the last year their um, uh, views on uh, the performance of our civil servants. For many of the civil servants I've known for years, most of them are very outstanding, and um, the um, civil servants like to adhere to rules. They think that they can ensure uh, that the system uh, is followed, but sometimes they feel uh, they, they look rather rigid. There have been a lot of discussion on the proposed civil service paying adjustment. The patron survey findings were out not long ago. Many people were shocked, thinking that uh, was it really uh, a survey for 2022? Uh, because um, a pay rise of 7% uh, was not really uh, possible when many uh, businesses are striving to keep a throat. Uh, in the past, uh, the civil service pay was more or less in line with uh, uh, small and medium enterprises, but when there, um, then when there is an economic turmoil, well, usually uh, the bigger companies uh, will be more stable than the SMEs. Now, 75 percent of the companies surveyed here are large enterprises. When over 90 percent of our businesses in Hong Kong are SMEs, so the findings may not really inflect reflect the reality. I understand that the civil service have seen two years of uh, frozen pay, and they, of course, have aspirations for pay rise. But think, times have changed. If we continue to follow our established procedures, that will only give rise to controversies in society. Some may say that uh, if uh, pay rise are granted according to the system, that can uh, give a boost to the economy, and uh, enterprises may follow suit, and employees can all benefit. People with this mentality may as well uh, pay a visit to the empty uh, premises and uh, shops in Causeway Bay. It's true that with uh, the 
relaxation of social distancing measures, uh, it, the economy is um, improving, but then uh, our economy has been dealt a heavy blow. Uh, Nine percent of uh, the enterprises are still relying on the ESS to keep alive. So if the civil service pay rise is too sharp, it's hard or impossible for SMEs to follow and would add to the pressure of enterprises in retaining talent. I hope uh, the civil service can uh, really consider the uh, perception of the public. Now, uh, some say that uh, private enterprises will uh, increase pay to retain talents, but then uh, the government is different. Civil servants enjoy so-called iron rice bowls. In uh, sectors like INT and financial services, if uh, people fail to meet the KPIs, they will have to go, and the turnover is big. Whereas uh, in the civil service, so long as you have not committed any serious mistake, you will not be dismissed. So uh, naturally, people will become rather passive and laid back. The government will say that without a pay rise, civil service morale will be affected. But then, if civil servants do not live up to public expectations, they're going to do a blow to public morale. Civil servants are just administrative experts, but not political um, elite. They have um, deficiencies in um, a political sense. The CE elect said that he is going to be result oriented. It will not do if we just stick to the rules and procedures. So when it comes to recruitment, a promotion, and a reward and punishment system for civil servants. There must be a reform. We must ensure that uh, only meritorious people will be appointed to these positions, and then people will feel better about giving them a pay rise. Thank you. Mr. Kwok Kang. Whether we can have smooth governance, whether we can implement our policies are planned, the civil service play a critical role. No one will say no to uh, this statement. Under the principle of patriots ruling Hong Kong, the political loyalty of civil servants will be part of um, their um, performance appraisal. Uh, civil servants very often have their hands tied under the excuse of political neutrality. Now, when patriots are ruling Hong Kong, I think uh, there, we have provided good opportunities for people who have the will and ability to get things done. Our civil service must uh, have a, a global and national uh, perspective. They should take the initiative to learn about national uh, affairs and also the direction of the country because we have to be accountable to the country as well as to our people. The intention of the motion is not to um, generalize things. Yes, we have uh, done a very good job in terms of integrity. Among 180 countries, we're always among the top 20 when it comes to a clean government. It's just that we are in a new era. We must uh, place more focus on ability to solve problems and to tackle future political and uh, global issues. We have seen uh, controversies surrounding the proposed civil service pay rise. I think uh, it's not because of uh, the inadequate performance on the part of the government in fighting the fifth wave of the epidemic. And there are some problems of coordination and communication within the government. Take February when uh, the epidemic was as peak as an example. There wasn't enough isolation facilities. Uh, many um, patients with mild symptoms did not get the support they need when uh, under isolation at home. They could not receive the support uh, packets soon enough, and we rely on voluntary teams to dispatch the uh, anti-epidemic packs to them. The public at large would like to see improvements on the part of the civil service. 
and the pay adjustment and promotion system of the civil service attach significance to seniority. You deny it, but that's a fact. Unless a civil servant has uh, made a serious mistake, otherwise he will not be sacked. The so-called stability or iron rice bowl is the only attraction of the civil service. Why do we say so? We no longer have uh, pensions and the pay is more or less in line with uh, the market to attract talents. Yes, of course, an iron rice bowl uh, is a bit is attractive to a certain extent. Now we uh, uh, we face a trend of a tide of uh, retirement. There are succession problems in the civil service, and uh, civil servants are being uh, posted to fill different gaps. So we have a succession gap within the civil service, and this has to be addressed the soonest possible. Many members have mentioned this culture of doing less to make fewer mistakes and doing nothing to make no mistakes. Yes, this may be a common flaw within the civil service. How do we solve it? We should not just focus on uh, administration. I think we should together come up with a good solution, not just the principal officials. Our civil servants should go out to the community so that they can all contribute their efforts in resolving livelihood issues. I have no objection to setting KPIs as suggested by many members, but I want a government to be open and transparent, give us the justifications and rationale behind certain public policies, because uh, the government and the community must be in tandem. If uh, the two are not synchronized, then no matter how much you have done, you will not uh, uh, be appreciated. The next government has a long way to go in this uh, reform. As uh, Mr. Johnny said, a little, a small step every day will mean a big step. The meeting is now adjourned until 9 a.m. tomorrow.